months ago, I bought two Class A stereo integrated solid state amplifiers. I bought them because our customers from around the world were telling me how great they were and I wanted to really experience it and compare them for myself. And later on in this video, I'm going to tell you which one I would keep if I could only have one. But for now, let's get into some detail. The first amplifier was the Passlabs Int25. 25. 25 watts per channel, solidly built, you know, a really classic amplifier. Many of our customers have the XA25, which is just the power amp version. But this one has a little preamp on the front in the sense that it's integrated it. And I found when I compared that with the XA25 that there was something a little bit magical about the Int25, which for me made it actually even better. Now, the second amplifier is the Sugden A21 SE Signature. Again, an integrated amplifier, 30 watts per channel into 8 ohms. The Impass Labs is 25 watts per channel into 8 ohms. But in reality, I think the Pass Labs is probably a bit understated and there wasn't really much to tell between the two of them. But let's just look at the build quality first of all and let's look at some of the features. The build quality of the Pass Labs in 25 is incredible. I mean, the switching is lovely. You know, from switching from one input to another, the little buttons are very nice, tactile. They click nicely onto the relays. Everything is solidly built. Look at the heat sinks on the sides. Absolutely massive. Um, the front panel, the chassis, it, basically it weighs 49 pounds, which is about 22 kilos, which is equivalent to a bag of cement. Whereas the Sugden is much smaller, it's more rounded, it's less angular. It isn't that as heavy, it, 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 it's much lighter. It's about, I think it's about 35 pounds and about thir you know, 13 kilos. It, 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 it's, 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 it's smaller in every respect. It's more understated, shall we say. Um, the big integrated amplifier from Pass Labs, and it's, this is the small one from Pass Labs, is saying, look, here I am, this is me, listen to what I can do. The Sugden, on the other hand, is more subtle and saying, oh, yeah, I'm over here if you need me. It's a, a, a funny difference. But let's just look at the features. Now, the, the Sugden wins on the features point, although it hasn't got a muting button on the front. It does have four phono inputs instead of the Pass Labs 3. But very importantly, it has two phono outs. It has a tape out which means it has a fixed volume out, which would be ideal if you wanted to hook it to a headphone amplifier because neither of them have a headphone socket, which is understandable, that's not their function. But the Sugden also has a pre-out, which can be very useful if you want to hook it up to another piece of equipment. So if for whatever reason you might want to connect it to a subwoofer or whatever, you could. Now, obviously with the Sibelius, that's not needed. And again, the reason why I chose these two is because our customers from around the world were just loving the combination of these two amplifiers with our loudspeakers. I must say that mostly in America, they were people writing to me about how wonderful the Int25 is. And in the UK, they tended to be more people with the Sugden. And I think that's logical, it's understandable. The Sugden, for example, has been around for a very long time. James Sugden um, was a guy who invented and designed mechanical, electrical mechanical testing equipment and then switched to hi-fi in around 1967 and came up with his first Class A design. And he wanted a Class A design because at that time the solid state transistor amplifiers weren't very good to be honest. The very first ones they were often just class B or AB but the switching wasn't sophisticated in any sense and there was a lot of distortion and he wanted a, a transistorized amplifier that would sound as good as the very best tube and vacuum tube amplifiers from the 50s and it's you know the predecessors 
And he achieved it. He achieved it in his first hit, basically, with the A21. And the A21 is still on the market today. Um, OK, the chassis changed. Uh, maybe the components are a little bit better quality, but it, it more or less unchanged. I didn't choose the A21 for this comparison because I thought, well, let's go to the a21 SE Signature Edition because this is the one with the improved um, power uh, transformers and improved components and I thought it stood a better chance of competing with the mighty PAR slabs. I keep using the word mighty for the PAR slabs because it's, it is damn heavy, it's big and everything about it is big. But how do they sound? Well, when I'm listening to the Parslabs in 25, it reminds me of a comment that Alan Sercom of Hi-Fi Plus mentions quite regularly. He, we will return to, it draws him into the music. Now, I don't know if he said that about the Parslabs. He probably did, but he often uses that expression. And it's absolutely bang on here. If I'm listening, for example, to the late Beethoven string quartets, I could just sit back, listen to it on the pass labs once it's warmed up, which after about 35 minutes, it's just glorious. And you just sucked into it. And it's just wonderful. And everything is correct. The mid range is warm and smooth, but it's not too smooth. The ties are nicely formed. They're natural. They're not terribly bright and they're not dull, they're just correct. The bass is tight, it's controlled. For a Class A solid state amplifier, it's really good. And so if I come to the Sugden, it's almost exactly the same. The only thing about the Sugden is perhaps it's a little smoother. You know, Rolls-Royce and Bentley used to make identical cars. Maybe the Sugden is, is, the, is the Bentley and the Parslabs is the Rolls-Royce. Maybe it's a little bit, little bit smoother, but it's not much and it's fantastic. <clears throat> Excuse me. But there is one very big difference between the two. And that is in the sound stage. When you listen to the PAR slabs, the INT25, and you close your eyes, you can hear the instruments beautifully separated. And with certain tracks, like for example, Jackson Brown's Linda Paloma, you will hear that the two acoustic guitars, left and right, has got them on, panned far to the left and far to the right, are actually exactly where they are, just beyond the left and right loudspeakers. But if you play that same track on the Sugden A21SE, those guitars are way beyond the left and right. The sound stage is wider. Now, Jackson Brown's voice is in the same place. It's not further forward, it's not further back. It's actually exactly the same as the Parslabs, and it's got a very, very similar timbre. But there's a wider sound stage. Now, that's a matter of personal taste. It's like I mentioned in a previous um, video, it's like, do you want to sit further back in the hall or nearer the front? Because it's sort of widening out. You're kind of, it's more spacious. And I like that. I really, really like that. But there's not everything about the Sugden that I like. The one thing I don't like about the Sugden is it's noisy. Now, I want to be, be sure here. I don't want to put you off. All I'm saying is if you turn that volume up and it's just a, a rotary pot basically and you, you, well, you don't need to put your head next to the loudspeakers or the drive cones because you'll hear it. There's hiss and there's hum. You'll hear it. The only thing is that in order to listen to music loud, you only need to turn the volume a little way because the gain is all in the bottom end and it's a bit annoying but it's quite old-fashioned and all of Sugden amps do it it's part of their design you turn it round to the nine and you're already blasting your ears out it's a thing that most amps used to do in the 70s I think it was a way of showing off and saying wow look how loud it goes if it's making that much noise here I wonder what noise it'll make halfway round well it doesn't make much difference trust me 
So in fact, to enjoy music, it's not a problem because I hate amps that hum and I hate amps that hiss if I hear it when the music is playing. But absolutely, I don't with the Sugden and I don't hear it even when the music's silent because, as I say, you don't need to turn it very far. However, the pass labs, you can turn that volume right round onto full volume and you won't hear a thing unless your room is extremely quiet then maybe you might hear a tiny little bit of hiss if your hearing's good and maybe a tiny bit of hum but i don't think you will it's basically silent so silent you wonder whether it's even switched on or kicked in so that is a major difference between the two now what are the other differences the other differences are well, Nelson Pass designed his amplifier. I mean, Nelson Pass is really a massive figure in the world of hi-fi. I mean, what he doesn't know about amplifier design isn't worth knowing. And I love the way he explores all different ideas, especially with his first Watt series. And in the N25, I think he's just brought everything together into one envelope, one chassis, and it's exciting. But it's expensive. You know, in Europe, it's nine and a half thousand euros. Now, that might seem crazy to some people, and it's not actually a hell of a lot of money when you think about that they're handmade, the quality of the construction, you buy one and it will last you a lifetime. If anything ever should happen to go wrong with it, you know you can just ship it back and Nelson and the team will fix it. And that exactly the same applies to the Sugden. Sugden have been more or less in the same building since 1967. I think they've moved once, maybe twice, but that's it. They're always there. They will always repair all of the equipment right back to the very early equipment. So they're both manufacturers that you can trust. You literally could buy those products blind without hearing them, without any worries, because they're not going to depreciate much in the long term, and they're just fantastic quality they're going to work now you might be thinking well they're not very powerful 25 and 30 watts but trust me if your speakers are 87 or more db per channel like our Sibelius's speakers are then that's really not an issue um, and they will go plenty plenty loud enough and plenty more um, there's no no area there so i know you're waiting for me to say which one do i want of the two if I could only have one. And I thought about it and I scratched my head and the answer is I bought these amplifiers and I wouldn't want to, to let go of any of them, either of them. However, if the hi-fi police came in and said, Harley, you can only have the Sugden or the Int25 for the rest of your life, which of the two are you going to choose? Uh. I'm going to go for the Sugden because of its soundstage. And there's something happening between the Sugden A21 SE and the Sibelius that is magical. The Int25 is fantastic. And if I hadn't heard the Sugden, I would have been happy for the rest of my life. But there's another little reason. The reason is also I can buy two Sugden A21 SEs for the price of one in 25. And that's 5,000 euros difference in Europe. Now, I imagine that the Sugden in America will be more expensive because you've got obviously all the shipping and all the rest of it. But 5,000 euros is quite a lot. You know, you can buy a, a lot of luxury trips to concerts for 5,000 euros. Um, you could invest in something else, other equipment, or, you know, I could personally maybe invest in another recording or part of a recording for some of our young musicians. So if I only have one, um, look, I'm not going to get rid of either because one month I'll be listening on the Int25 and another month I'll be living on the, listening on the Sugden. And actually, I still enjoy listening to the you know, two of them, comparing them, and I'm not ready to let any of them go. But that is actually my verdict by 
a whisker the Sugden A21SE because of its tape output and that wide sound stage. And yeah, I'll put up with that little bit of hiss or hum if you turn it up because I'm not going to turn it that far. Well, I hope you found that interesting. I hope you found it enjoyable and it answered some of your questions. And until the next video, enjoy your music.